the Almighty God is there. He's alone for all eternity. We can't we can't picture that, right? God has always existed. How 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 has He always existed? That's that's time is a creation of God. So time, as hard as it's, it is to believe, has its beginning. Time has its beginning. Before that, time was not in a picture. Time is a creation of the Almighty. So he is outside of time. So eternity is with God. Eternity is not with anything that God makes. So he is outside of time. Okay, so he's always existed. That's why we can't understand that because we are made into time, his creation. So he's there, almighty God. You cannot begin to imagine how powerful he is. He holds the universe in a span. Now we don't know if that expression was is to be taken literal, but it gives us an idea of how vast God is. He holds the universe with a span. A span in Hebrew is from your thumb to your pinky when you stretch it out. God cannot die. Death is part of his creation. Someone is made into time. He cannot exist. It's possible for him to not exist. Because before he existed, he didn't exist. So he can die so here it is god has created things now everything the moment he starts creating that creation is in time that creation can die he himself cannot die because death is part of his creation not that he is creating death but the moment you create something that thing can die but he intended for that thing to be there with him forever okay i forgot to include this in the video Watching it back, I realized I missed something. So God is all alone and he decides to begin creating. Because of this love he has, he wants to create and give happiness to the things he's made. So he hasn't created before. This is his first time creating. Now this first creation is going to be very special. He's going to give it a unique name or him, her, whatever he decides to create. He's going to give it a unique name, something so special, it'll be like nothing else. And he's going to teach this being that he's going to make. You know, you're, you're, you're the first of all my creations. You know, the Bible says he's the firstborn of all creation. I'm going to teach you everything I know. You know, we're going to be like this. You know, you're going to be my son. That's why the scripture says... To which of the angels of God did he say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. So God makes his son and he will be an angel because angel means a messenger of God. So if God is going to send someone to something, that person is an angel, he can use this firstborn that he has made. Right? He says, to which of the angels, to which of the sons of God, to which of the messengers of God did God say, you are my only begotten. Jesus is the angel, the messenger of God, whom God has begotten. So take that idea of angel out of your mind. That angel have have wings. Now that's what that's that that that's the only thing angel means. Angel does not only mean that. Angel just means a messenger of God. So it doesn't diminish anyone's position. If God sent Himself, you know, somehow, that one He sends is an angel, because it's a messenger. So Jesus, by definition, is an angel. He So to which of the angels did God say, today I have begotten you? So God makes him and he doesn't call him his word, right? Word is not the name of the firstborn creation of God. God didn't create his firstborn and call him, you're my word. He says, you're my word because you're going to do what my mouth does. You know, now they, let's get into the future. They make man, okay? And if God wants to send a message to them, he can send his son, so, he's, you know, the angels are God's words because they can speak for God. The prophets are God's words because they can speak for God. The Bible is God's word because it speaks for God. 
Because if God himself speaks with us, imagine God delivering the whole Bible verbatim, you know, through his voice. Who can stand through that? You know, the Almighty talking to us, we can't, we can't stand through that. You know, the nation of um, the Israelites, when they heard Moses speaking, they, they told, you know, I mean, when they heard God speaking, they told Moses, let not God speak with us for fear we may die. But let you speak with us. So Moses is an angel of God. He is a message. He's a messenger of God. God told Moses, "Who appointed mouth for the speechless? I will make you God to Aaron, and he will be your spokesperson. So Aaron will be a word for you. I will make you God to him, and he will be your word. He will be your angel. He will be your messenger." Okay, so. Jesus is called the Word of God because He is a messenger of God. He's going to deliver the message of God. And He is the ark of all the messengers of God because He came down, the Word became flesh and dwelt with man. So He came down and died for us because God Himself, again, cannot come down and die. God cannot die. So he sent someone who can die to come and die. But I, I mentioned that later on in this video. I just wanted to mention um, how set up this firstborn creation of God will be. That's why he's so special. You know, and he's just like this with his father. So he makes his, his angelic creations by means of his word. He makes man. He puts them on the earth. Beautiful garden. And he tells man, fill the earth. Make the whole earth a paradise, a garden. Having subjection to fish of the sea, the animals, flying creatures, everything. But something changes. This angelic being... Another thing. God did not create death. But because he created, death is a possibility. God did not create sin. But because he's created something... Sin is a possibility. So he did not destine the devil to become a devil. That cherub, he did not destine that cherub to become disobedient. But the moment he created, there is a possibility for disobedience. And that possibility came into play when the devil disobeyed God. And he changes things now, right? God's purpose remains the same. But now it's just delayed because of the devil. So, God's purpose for man was to fill the earth. It's delayed now. That purpose will come to pass, but something else has to take place. God did not create a devil, but because he created free will, when he made his son, his son has free will. The angels, they have free will. Adam and Eve, they have free will. So because of free will, and they are not robots governed by God in everything they do, they have choice to do what they want to do. They can choose to disobey God. So because the devil has his free will, he's not a robot. He can choose to disobey his father. Because God doesn't want us to worship him just because he's making us worship him. That means nothing at all. He wants us to worship him because we love him and we want to worship him. So when the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus could disobey his father because he has a will of his own. He says, let your will be done, father, not mine. I've come to glorify your name, not mine. I've made your name known to them, not mine. And even though he's made God's name known to us, whose name do you know? Do you even know the name of Jehovah or do you know Jesus' name? So again, you're contradicting, you're twisting Jesus' words. And then when Jesus said, oh, now I'm going into it. Now when, G when, when Jesus was on the earth, they wanted to stone him because he was calling himself God, right? And then what did Jesus say? He said, hold up. Didn't the psalmist say in Psalms 82 that Jehovah said to his sons, I myself say you are God's sons of the Most High? Didn't the psalmist say that? So if I'm calling myself a son of God, then aren't I also a God? So then for what blasphemy are you stoning me? Jesus is telling them I am a God. And they're stoning him because he is making himself like a God, which he is. But he didn't believe that. He isn't saying he is God the Father Almighty. Why would he say 
I am not equal to the Father. The Father is greater than I am. The one who sent me is greater than I am. I can do nothing of my own initiative, only what the Father commands me. Why would he say all of that and then at the end say he is God Almighty, which he never said. He is saying he is a God, which he is, because he is the firstborn creation of God. And through him, other gods, other angels came into existence. So don't twist Jesus' words. Never once did he say, I am the Father. Because of free will, they can disobey God. So when the devil tempted Jesus, he could cave in, but God cannot be tempted. So And the devil knows who Jesus is, so for him to even try and tempt Jesus, if he is God in the flesh, not word in the flesh, if he is God in the flesh, would be a waste of his time. And the devil doesn't waste his time. He has no time to play games. He knows who Jesus is. He knows Jesus can disobey his father, just like the angels can disobey God, which some of them did in the days of Noah. But Jesus proved obedient to God, even as far as dying, even though he was a perfect man and was put unjustly to death. And because he died unjustly, God raised him. To a superior position jesus when, when he was on the torture state he said my god my god why have you forsaken me okay that's another video but that tells you something jesus was speaking to a different entity from himself the entity who was going to save him from death that's why his name was jesus at that time because jesus means jehovah is going to save him from death so jesus was going to die and the only person who could resurrect him is his father and he had faith in his father that his father will resurrect him so his faith resurrected him. His father resurrected him. And I have to say this also because as I'm saying certain things, I know what questions are coming up in your mind. And although I've made videos on it, most likely you're not even going to look through my, my Bible playlist, my Bible videos playlist to see the videos and hear me explain to you what Jesus meant by it. You're probably going to say, oh, well, didn't Jesus say before Abraham was, I am? Didn't Jesus say, I will resurrect me on the, on the third day? I, I, I touch on that, but let me touch on it just a little bit. Jesus is saying, and this is so common sense. I don't, I don't know why people just keep using that. Before Abraham was, I am, as in I existed before Abraham was. Look this up. Look at the, the, the Greek grammar and what Jesus meant by him saying before Abraham was, I am. As a matter of fact, I'll post a link explaining that under this this video and also when he says i will resurrect myself on the third day i made a video on that jesus would i made a video on that please watch that okay he is not saying he can resurrect himself because even galatians 1 1 says the father will resurrect the son the son will be dead he will breathe his last that's why jesus did not want to die but he submitted as far as dying but if jesus is god then it means jesus didn't really die so then why is he even caring that he's dead if he's not really dead and he's in heaven watching the whole thing? Okay, please reason and watch, watch, watch my playlist and look, look at the titles. So now man has sinned. And in God's sight, the only way to show his love for man is to sacrifice something. There are probably another way for him to show his love there's probably another way for us to gain everlasting life but god doesn't choose an easy route he chooses a route to show man how much he loves us he's going to give us his very best he's going to sacrifice his very best so now there are two ways he can do that he can either sacrifice himself or he can sacrifice the very creation that is closest to him. The Bible uses firstborn many times. Remember when God took the firstborn of every son in Egypt? They would mourn as for an only son, as for a firstborn. Firstborn child is set up, you can say. And the firstborn of a king is very set up. He's, he's, he's a great prince. He's next in line. God did not tell Abraham, sacrifice yourself to show me that you love me, that you trust me. He told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac, your only one. That's a foreshadow of what God is going to do. Because by means of Isaac, all the nations will bless themselves. By means of 
God's firstborn, all the nations will bless themselves. See the picture? God is obviously, needless to say, he's intelligent. Needless to say, I shouldn't even be saying that. Needless to say, he's intelligent. There are many symbolism and foreshadows in the Bible. Abraham is the father of the nations. God is our father. Isaac is his son. He's the firstborn of his actual wife, Sarah. God says, sacrifice your firstborn, Isaac, to me. I'm going to sacrifice my firstborn. Why not sacrifice? Why did not God sacrifice himself? Same reason why he did not ask Abraham to sacrifice himself. Abraham can die, but God is giving us an example. He himself cannot die. Death was never in the picture for his creation. But because of disobedience, death now is in the picture. And now God has to show how much he loves us by sending someone to die. But he cannot send himself because let's say God sends. He, he cannot send himself. He, is, he cannot be in his creation. He is outside of creation. He is God. Okay? We are subject to him. We die, not him. If we sin, he doesn't pay for it. We do. But he wants to he wants to show a cost. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to do something without cost to himself, only to show us how much he loves us. So he's going to send the very next thing to him. What is the very next thing to him? Jesus Christ. By means of Jesus, God created everything. Jesus is God's firstborn. He is the only begotten son of God. He is the only one made by the Almighty. So he's set up. He's the son of a king. He's the firstborn. All the angels, everything that exists, came by means of Jesus. Jesus has been with his father for ancient times. Okay? They are like this. Everything the father does... The son will do the same thing. Everything the father does, the son will do the same thing. Like father, like son. But now God is telling his son, go down for them. Die for them. And I will save you. That's what Jesus means. Yah has saved. Die for them. I will save you. And after you do that deed, I will make you king on my right hand side. For a day thousand years and then Christ would hand the throne back to his, his God and Father I will make you king at my right hand side die for them because God himself cannot come down because if God takes something apart from himself and brings it down to the earth and that person says yeah I'm God you know, God sent me to die for you. You know, um, I came here to die for your sins. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But if we've seen that one, have we really seen the Father? Really? We cannot see God and live. So now this person that God sent, he's taken out of himself because he himself cannot come down. He's taken from himself. That person comes down. He does all the works God told him to do. So much to the point where we think that is God. And then he dies. Did God die? This person is dead. He's, he's, he's dead. For three days he's dead. God raises him back up. Now when that person, if that is God, he did, God did not die. That person died. So did God really love the world that much that he sent something that died but he himself felt no pain because it's not really him? Okay. But he's sending someone who does have a conscience, who does have a will to not die. That's why Jesus was in so much agony. He said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But let not my will be done, but let your will be done. Jesus did not want to die. He's going to not exist for three days. Death is painful. His sweat became as drops of blood. He was in a lot of pressure. He did not want to die. So he was a created being. He has his own will. He said, let not my will be done, but let your will be done. He has his own will. 
but he remained subject to the father. And did God feel pain from that? Yes, he did, because that's his firstborn son. Even though it's not him, it's his firstborn son. If Abraham killed Isaac, even though Abraham didn't kill himself, did Abraham feel, would Abraham feel pain from that? Yes, that's his son, his firstborn son. Now, Ishmael was his firstborn, but Ishmael was from the maidservant of Sarah, so that doesn't really count. But God did bless Ishmael, but the promised child is Isaac. That's, from the, that's the son from the woman that never gave birth, from the woman that Abraham loved. So Abraham loved Isaac like no other. So if Isaac was to die, that would be a sacrifice to him. Who would, set, who would let their child die for anyone? Nobody. But God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son, his firstborn of all creation. The one that through which everything came into existence. That one. He did not hold even him from dying for us. Battery's about to die. Okay?